Excuse me, Mr. Barman, a large, fruity, zesty cider, one of your finest sweet, sweet nectars of lager, and the usual, a Coke, no ice. Ooh, who's that, Michael Jackson? Did you hear that suspended card at the end? That was nice. Did you like that? It was gorgeous. It was all right. It was all right. It wasn't excellent. No. But it certainly wasn't your worst. See, needed, a few more, needed a few more mistakes. It wasn't last week. It wasn't a mistake. Awfully... It was a suspended card to form a playable cadence. A suspended cord. Well, cheers to suspended cords. Cheers. Clink Lovely. for my glass. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Why are you drinking out of plastic glass, Dan? Outdoor dining. It's not, mm. not plastic glass, is it? It's a plastic cup. Because a plastic okay, glass. Okay. Well, Mr. Panicti, moving on. I always start with a moving on because I always get a, a sarky comment from the West Wing. Just stop being so dumb. Oh no, I can't help it. Technically, I'm the east. Coming from a to, to, to dumbest us. member of the podcast. Yeah, to us, you're the east, but to them, you know, it's west. So, you know, uh, I'm thinking of the listener. Technically, I'm I am actually facing west. So I'm Tom with the small beard. This is Daniel with the medium sized beard, and the man with the large beard of the three. And I'm Joseph Benham, who is being compared to the Shutterstock suicide guy. That's true. He actually has. I have wow. been, I've been told I look like him. Why have I never heard this? You have, I've just said it. Well, not before now. I don't know. Um, because I, it's not actually a claim to fame. Well, really? yeah, I, I wouldn't. Yeah, I don't really, it's not a famous I don't person. really go around being like, oh, hey, did you know? I mean, a bouncer once said I look like Post Malone on the way into a club once. I was mm. like, all right. I'd never heard did you it get before. Yourself, did you have a little wee? So did you get a little excited? I'd, I'd never heard that, but no one at... No one had ever said that to me before. I was like, all right, fair enough. Went up to the third floor later in the night. A Post Malone song was playing, and this random guy came up to me and was like, it's your song because you look like Post Malone. I was like, this is really weird because that's happened twice in one night I can now. see the confusion from your tattooless head. Hmm. Honestly. Was uh, it the same guy? No, 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 because the first guy was the bouncer letting me into the club. Did you use the same drugs from the sound but of it? It was, <laughs> it was so weird, but then late, it actually sort of played into my hands because later I needed to go outside and the bouncer was like, look, when people are going out now, we're not letting them back in because of the time. And I was like, it's me. The guy said looks like Post Malone. He was like, oh, yeah, I'll let you back in. I was like, awesome. Nice. That's, so, that's nice. There's a fun little anecdote. That was brilliant, honestly. Can you have more of those, I have, please? I have a friend that can testify to the fact that a random guy came up to me on the dance floor as well. Yeah, don't like care. Him. News. I certainly do have some news. That and... was so incredibly <laughs> rude. <laughs> I'm going to start us off with another no, you're not. topic. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. No, no you're I not. am, Joe. I like bringing topics to the table that we said we would not discuss on this podcast, Ooh. so I'm going to do it again. Controversial. I brought football. Mm-hmm. Oh, now I'm bringing politics. Say. Please don't. Oh, I thought it, you were going to bring football again. A then. wise man has always said, you should always discuss politics at the pub. No, I think you got that the wrong way around. No, no, I didn't. Okay. I found it on Google. Let's see how this goes. So we had the local elections Woo-hoo. on Thursday, and people got to vote for mayors. Did. And I don't know if you all saw, but London had a bit of a, uh, to put it bluntly, shit show of an election. Oh, dear. You had your usual candidates, Labour, Conservative. Monster I'm not going to get into... Loony Party. Yeah, Count Bimface. My favourite. Uh, I'm not going to get into who Isn't we'd Lord vote for Buckethead? or who we oh, think. No. Sorry. I just want to talk about one particular candidate mm-hmm. who's a YouTuber called Nico Omolano. Okay. Who, as a joke, turned up to an EDL march once and had started his own the um, group called the NDL, the Nico Defence League, <laughs> and created that as his political party and ran for London the mayor. No. So I was looking into this. All You need a few things like to, you need to live in London for a certain period of time or at least have an address registered there and, and such. But essentially, as long as you tick those boxes... You could just purchase that garage. You genuinely could. You just have to own a property. You don't have to reside in it. As long as you tick those criteria, essentially all you need is a £10,000 deposit and I know I'm saying like only £10,000, and then if you get 5% of the vote share, you get your deposit back. He didn't. He got 2%. Okay. Is that all you need? £10,000 to run for London Mayor. And 5%, oh, and 5% of, of the, the votes vote back? Share. Yeah. No, 5% of the votes to get your ten grand back. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a deposit. Now, he only got 2%. However, he did beat uh, a gent called Lawrence Fox, don't know if you've heard of him, very controversial. He's always mm-hmm. over Twitter in the news and stuff. He beat him. But I just want to give you a couple of the NDL manifesto policies. Please do. I would like to hear these if they're as ridiculous as his um, first EDL match. Boris Johnson will be forced to shush. Brilliant. 
any McDonald's with a broken McFlurry machine will be shut down and turned into low rent housing. <laughs> How low? <laughs> On the 99p saver menu. <laughs> the EDL will be deported to Poland and taken off our streets so they can learn what it's like to be an immigrant. Yeah, brilliant. Citizens in Poland, and in, a, in addition to that, will be given legal access to guns. Mm-hmm. I assume I'm, they're not related. I don't status. think it's fair to, it might be related. to disgrace Poland with the EDL. To be yeah, has it? yeah what, what have Poland done to deserve <laughs> no, honestly, that? Honestly, that's so rude. Big Ben will be renamed Big Ben Clock so it qualifies as a BBC. Brilliant. Three quarter length trousers to be banned mm-hmm. and the death penalty for anyone who wears them. Brilliant. On board. Turn off all power in London once a year and call it Lundoff. That would be nice. Imagine the stars. And VAR will be banned from the Premier League along with the Glazers. Oh, and Prince Andrew will be banned from going within a four mile radius of any school. I think Prince Andrew just needs putting in jail. Another one of his policies as well, just let me quickly add, was he would employ more policemen and put them straight into the Houses of Parliament because, in his own words, that's where the real criminals are. <laughs> now, another point to this is if he'd have got into power, his salary as London mayor would have been £152,734 a year. Yeah. That's how much the London mayor gets paid. Really? 152000 That's double the salary of an MP. That's nice. No wonder when someone wants to get a mayorship, they just want to stick with it. Maybe the the BBC did a segment where each candidate got to represent why they should be voted for in two words, and everyone was going on like greener streets, this, that. His two words were for fives. Oh, nice. Yeah. That was an, for, for those listening, Dan pulled a, um, a reasonably seductive um, but slightly disturbing face. Okay, have you got any more news for us? I've got a second bit of news. Lovely, thank you very much. But it's going to be our nod to space. I love space. Nod to space. Here we go. Has anyone heard of Coldplay recently? Coldplay? Yes. No. Not recently. Well, I'll tell you who has. The astronauts in the International Space Station. Okay. So Coldplay have just released a new song. Wait, let me... (laughs) They they took some CDs up and that's the only one they've got. No, 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 no. (laughs) X Uh, and Y on repeat. (laughs) (laughs) That would be a nightmare. Could you imagine? I'm tired of clocks. Be like that that scene from uh, The Martian, you know, when he's only got the same music. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go on. And um, they've released a new song. Mm -hmm. And they did a live stream with the astronauts in the International Space Station and performed it. That's brilliant. It is. However, it was possibly the most awkward interaction I've ever witnessed on camera. It was just such an awkward conversation. Chris Martin just... It it was almost like it had been pitched to him. He'd rejected the idea and gone. His agent had gone, you're doing it anyway, So awkward on Chris Martin's part, the astronaut's part. The conversation was just awkward, like... The the astronaut, the astronauts they, are like we haven't really got time they, for this. They asked really in depth questions. They asked astronaut questions. Mm. So uh, all Coldplay wanted to do was say hi, make we're some Coldplay publicity of their new track, and do a song. Yeah. And they were like, "Oh, do you want to give us like the background to you know what 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 the song's about like, and why you no. wrote it and stuff?" So he starts going on saying like, uh, "You know, we've not been able to perform to anyone on Earth, which." They, they can. Mm-hmm. It's called the internet. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to perform for for the people to what, in space to the, to the six people in space. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in the exact same way they could have performed to the people on Earth. Yeah. Just let me put it out there. Um, and then started saying like music is a rep- the only way we can represent how we think aliens might think or something like that. He, oh, okay. So basically, it's like he wasn't prepared for the questions and was Chris Martin was high at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And so were the astronauts. You know, here's two fun things. Both <laughs> both relate to exactly what you're talking about. One, Chris Martin has said himself he knows nothing about music theory. He doesn't he can't read music. And I said this to a friend the other day anyway. Yeah, you can tell if you ever well. listen to Coldplay's music. Um but yeah, Chris Martin knows nothing about music theory. Um and two, if you go on Google Maps, you can explore the inside of the International Space Station. You can. It's so cool. You can also explore the inside of the TARDIS on Google Maps. Mm-hmm. But that's not real. What? Well, the inside of the TARDIS is it's a set. So um, this pertains mostly to me because of my 
cool investment history into Dogecoin. <laughs> but here's a here's it's a, not cool. here's it's a not tweet. big and it's not clever. Here's a tweet from Elon Musk that he made today. So SpaceX will be launching satellite Doge One to the moon next year. The mission will be paid for with Dogecoin. It will be the first crypto in space and the first meme in space. The first meme. Now that's yeah. interesting. I'm looking forward to that. So it'll be very, very interesting and will we'll, uh, net me quite a bit of money. What, what he's doing with a lot of his investments is bordering on illegal, surely, the way he's driving those prices. Not up. really, because... It's personal investments into crypto, isn't it? I don't think. I mean, I don't really understand it enough to be able yeah, to say let, yes Yeah, let's move enough. on. Yeah. We're probably getting into yes, a realm we don't understand. let's move on. And now I'm going to continue speaking numbers, but we are going to swiftly evacuate the conversation. Um, my favourite of the segment it is I was today years old when I found out. And I do like this segment a lot because it is always just me that is today years old when I found out. Now, sticking with the numbers that Joe has provided us with, and you may one day become familiar with with them if you become a dogecoin success i didn't realize you were going to talk about negative numbers it, so interesting. <laughs> it could be negative but it's the difference between a million and a billion oh i know this now yeah, yes I, I like. listeners i have copied this off instagram so don't tell me off uh, plagiarism i am giving all the credit to the young man that came up with this can't remember his name sorry shout, shout out, out young to man. nameless young man um now if a, a million sounds like, sounds like a rap name, young man. A young Sorry. man, in it. Spelt Y U N G. Wait, young mm. man is a. Never mind. Young man. Da, da, da. No, okay. Um, now, it's the difference, like I said, the difference between a million and a billion. Now, if a million seconds equates to about a week and a half, it's 11 days, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So a billion seconds would be 32 years. That's a big Good difference. Lord. Now, let me put it into context of money. If I was to give either of you, not that I've got the cash, but £5,000 a day for uh, six months, you would have a million pounds. If you wanted a billion, though, I would have to give you £5,000 a day for 548 years. Yeah. I could buy that garage. You could in eventually London. buy that garage in London. I mean, you could buy that carriage after six months if he's giving well, you no, five grand a I'll mortgage it at the three but grand a month you're saying. That is the huge difference. Like, people just think billions the next step after a million, but yeah. there's actually... I mean, there's hear, a million steps. Well, yeah, but you, you know, you hear people like, oh, millionaires and they, you know... It's not a million it's, steps. No, it's not. There's, there's, there's more than a million steps. steps. A thousand there's a million, million steps, million steps. A million million. Because you've got 999 yeah. million. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. well yeah. there's yeah, yeah. quite literally, there's a billion just, steps. Just there's, there's a lot. Yeah. Well, there's a billion steps. Um, and, you know, like you, uh, most of us probably know a millionaire, you know, like whether it be directly or indirectly. I was going to say, no, friend. I don't. <laughs> like there's probably someone who has in their life earned a million. But, you know, in, in the average career, uh, 50, say 50 year career, you're earning, like, call the average twenty thousand. We're in the north. Um, that that is that's a that's a million pounds there. Or fifty years, twenty thousand pounds a year. Um, but bi- you think billion? Like, oh, it's billionaire can't be much more than a millionaire. That, I, I never realised that huge gap between the both. This this goes into a whole different argument that I probably shouldn't open really. But I there's literally no reason for anyone in the world to be a billionaire. Based on the difference between a million and a bit, there's literally no reason why anyone on this planet should be a billionaire. No. Didn't I, I'm sure I read something saying that if Jeff Bozo, Jeff Bozo, Bezo. Bezo. Jeff Bozo. <laughs> Jeff. He's a Bozo. Yeah, Jeff, you Bozo. <laughs> you little bitch. If, if he gave. Imagine that's what his wife said in the divorce uh, album, just to get under his skin. It's something like he can afford to give every person on this planet a, a million pounds and, he and still he wouldn't and lose still, his and, and, and still be a billionaire and be able to comfortably live just as he is now it's well, someone else should have invented there's, amazon shouldn't they? Like, but there's, like, that's that's one person that could cure like famine yeah but are you ever going to completely cure it i know we're getting into a very i mean i am always hungry now, but i don't you know all you do is pause it the thing is right there's no way that anyone can live a lifestyle so frivolous that you couldn't couldn't afford couldn't afford the lifestyle if you were no longer a billionaire. Cush it's, can. it's literally impossible. Cush can. John mm. and Belford did it. Yeah, but went broke. Yeah, but he was a millionaire, not a billionaire. Give me a billion dollars, I'll go and spend it for you. No, no but I'll what, fri- what I'm uh, saying is, a fri- a fri- a there's lifestyle. no way that you could go from being a billionaire to a millionaire and suddenly 
oh, my lifestyle. I can't afford my lifestyle. That's literally impossible. I'd, I'd populate the moon and then I would fly to and from the moon just to pick up a carton of milk. We're, you know we're, getting, mean, very it, it, we're getting very deep here into whether sorry, socialism just, and, and stuff is no, right. No, no, so um, let's swiftly this, move on no, this to isn't, our next. This isn't about socialism, though. It is. There's just literally no reason for anyone on this planet to be a billionaire. There isn't. Right, before you get angry, let's move on to our next... I was today yeah, years old. I've I've got one. So what this have you got? this came up on TikTok. I've, I've not fact checked it. I don't know how accurate it is. TikTok but this is, is completely accurate. This They've is got a, a learning section and everything this, now. Like this is a shout out. Oh no, this just came up on my phone. Instagram's page. even accurate because it comes up at the bottom of the post saying this content is not accurate. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is a shout out to Kira underscore Malone one eight two zero. Shout out TikTok. Kira underscore Malone one eight two zero. That was the one. So. She filmed this guy sort of t- oh. talking talking about this. Uh, and you see him and you think, what's this guy going to say? And then he came out with this absolute whopper. And it's based on, <laughs> do, you remember, do you remember last week whopper. when you said about if you shot uh, bullets from Concord, a the plane to catch up with it or whatever? Yes, yeah, yeah. The Fairchild A10 Thunderbolt 2 Warthog has a single 30 millimeter Gatling cannon and two general electric turbines. Mm-hmm. When it fires its gun and puts its engines to full, it will actually accelerate backwards. So that doesn't mean that it'll be backwards. flying along and then suddenly shoots its gun and goes and starts going backwards. But it means the that... The guns are sun- sending out more force than the engines Yeah, are. so the velocity of it so is for that, um, for that, going backwards. For a, obviously, for a split second, for the, for the, yeah, yeah, for the time that the, the projectile is travelling out of the barrel, yeah, that's. I mean, you even if you don't know what a warthog looks like, got... it's got a very iconic like. No, no, you sound. know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, you've, yeah, um, yeah. So they fire him. You hear it on the film. Very films, small don't you? amounts of time. Yeah, but it, so, I, it just came up. It was pretty interesting. That's actually really interesting because the the the, the bullet is a bullet, isn't it? The cannon is, is more powerful than the amount of power the two general electric turbines put out at full power, which means that the amount of force produced by the Gatling cannon accelerates it backwards no way. so so, the, so basically the, the the plane is pulling is is sliding like the the barrel of the cannon is sliding away from the projectile as it comes out i guess so yeah because the, the, there was loads of people arguing in the comments going um this is called deceleration which it technically isn't because deceleration is slowing down which it doesn't do this is the velocity yeah well, mm, momentarily but, changing, but velocity technically not because then it'd have to move backwards because velocity is about the speed you are moving in a direction. Basically, it's the physics of Looney Tunes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, based on the whole accelerating backwards, whatever, whatever. Yeah. There's a really cool thing that I've seen on YouTube a couple of times, which is if you can match the knots you are traveling in an aircraft to the wind speed that is traveling in the opposite direction, you can literally float a plane like a helicopter oh, yes. I've in seen the same it. spot. I've seen that happen it's on so YouTube. It's so cool. It's, it's incredible. I imagine that's hard work because sure, the wind speed's variable. Well, yeah, so you've got to con- constantly control it. It's, it's dynamic, it changes, but uh, you, you think it's like an F-35 that's, you know, with the... the the jets that point down, point down, so it can literally take off vertically. Vtol, vertical takeoff VTOL, and landing yeah. aircraft. Um, but it's absolutely incredible to watch. Yeah, it's really cool. But yeah. you can do it in. I mean, it's slightly small, like like a, a little like Cessna. T- yeah. yeah. But um, it's. I don't know the ins and outs, but I believe it's based on ground speed relative to airspeed traveling in the opposite direction. Yada yada yada. Lots of boring sciencey stuff that I don't. Really that was understand. a lot of boring sciencey stuff, but very interesting. I'll get. I'll get a pilot's license on the cost of 40 grand and then I'll let you know. What I did what I did find out about pilot's license is when people get their pilot's license, the tradition is to kneel down in front of the propeller of the plane whilst it's off and uh, and douse themselves in water. That's just the tradition. <laughs> whilst it's off. Just yeah. the one unlucky bastard. Poor son didn't, <laughs> poor son didn't have the qualification. Congratulations! <laughs> and, and, if, and, if you fa- and if you fail, we sacrifice you to the plane <laughs> gods. Right, go on. So... Before we move on to our uh, our final segment of the day, mm-hmm. if you listened last week and heard Joe promise he was going to wear a t-shirt with yes! the entire script to the B-movie on and the... thought, this week, I'm going to tune in on YouTube Dirty and watch it instead. Liar. 
you'll be sorely disappointed. I'd like if to. If you're watching on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, where we post these short clips and videos or the full episode on YouTube, you will be incredibly, thoroughly, disgustingly disappointed I'd... that Joe is wearing a Teddy Fresh, shout out Teddy Fresh, jumper with SpongeBob on it. I'd like to, I'd like to point out I bought that shirt four years ago. Does it still fit? T-shirt. Um, well, Probably not. Fucking hope so. A little bit tight. But I bought that T-shirt four years ago, and a I wore it. I wore it exactly once as a joke in college. And I walked in. I was like, "Hey guys, guess what? Got the B movie script on a T-shirt." And everyone was like, "Ha ha, that's really funny." I realised that made it sound like they were sarcastically laughing. I wish at it, I went they, to college four years it. ago. Anyway. I thought I'd compensate. You can go for back the fact... to college anytime you want. Thank you. you I'm going to do hairdressing. To... I thought I'd compensate the fact that Joe isn't wearing his B movie t shirt with another B fact. That would be lovely. I thought, thank so... you. That really makes up for it. I can sleep tonight. So, if you were to cut a beehive open, mm -hmm. what shapes will be on the inside? Uh, hexagons. Hexagons. Yes. But do you know that bees do not construct their beehives using hexagons? What do you mean? He's is lying. it zigzags that they just build, happen to make hexagons? He's lying. They build circular tubes that collapse into hexagons because that's what happens when you stack a bunch of soft uh, soft tubes. So they, oh, build, of course. they build cylindrical tubes no and they collapse into hexagons. Yeah, if you piled a load of soggy toilet rolls up, yeah, they would, <laughs> they'd form a shape they to would keep form a, Is that really the only that's you couldn't the first, you couldn't have said the, the actual it's tube the first you couldn't have just soft said, cylindrical <laughs> tube I thought just, the the that's really interesting fact I love Thank that, you very that much. I, I, would I genuinely was today years old I'd stumble I've had but a few beers haven't I I'd stumble genuinely you know that's you, the last time I'm covering for you Joe don't do let it happen again do you know if you if you find a a, a bee that is like downed needs reviving downed you know? yeah. it's been shot down yeah, medic like, I need a medic yeah like it needs a revive it's not got a self revive a <laughs> teaspoon of sugar hon water well or honey oh, oh yeah mm -hmm. of course um, to help it and get it back on its feet but as David Mitchell shout out David Mitchell shout out David Mitchell correctly Mitchell. pointed out one teaspoon of sugar is more than a single bee produces in its life. Mm. So therefore, you give this teaspoon of honey. It's now diabetic. To, no, no, no. It's you're, the world is making a, a net loss yeah. on honey. Of course, because you provided more than it and produces. And as we discussed in last episode, if we did pay bees minimum wage, it'd cost a fortune. But like I said, I already, I already pay that much for my. Uh, well, yeah, anyway. of course. Ever since I became a millionaire through Dogecoin. Uh, right, so moving on to the next segment that we uh, had its debut on uh, the last episode. It is our Let's Hear It For The Girls Woo. segment. Here we go. Let's hear it for you. Um, now, we asked yourselves, the, the ladies who are listening, if there is anything that completely and utterly baffles you about men. Um Thanks, Joe. Thanks very much. Cheers. Um, if in. there is anything that you want our perspective on, or if there is basically anything you'd like us to cover, because we do find on occasion we do talk a lot about guns, fighter jets, and transformers. Um, so me and Tom are here to answer your queries, and Joe is here to mediate. <laughs> yes. Um, now, we have had voice notes, messages, and please do continue to send them in. We want to cover as many as we possibly can. Um, but this one is from uh, Vicky. Shout out, Vicky. This one is for you. Hey, guys. How's it going? Um, Lovely, so thanks. my question is, um, if a girl sent you a big, long, juicy paragraph, right, do you screenshot it and put it in the group chat for advice on what to say back? Because let me tell you, as a girl, when we get, to be fair, not even a paragraph, Sometimes just even a text from a boy <laughs> that is straight in the group chat and that response is collective. To be honest, half the things from your girlfriend probably are collective responses. So do boys do the same or is that just a girl thing? Now, mm. I, I don't ask for uh, help on what to respond with, but I'll answer it for us all. We absolutely screenshot those messages yes, and send them to each other. Hang on. Do not speak for me. 
I don't have any friends to send screenshots to. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that. Yeah, I, oh, yeah. Uh, yes, Vic, we, we do indeed. Uh, we screenshot messages, we send them to the lads, uh, and we thoroughly discuss probably just as much as you do. I mean, we, we're emotional human beings, of uh, uh, you know, all the same. So we, of course, and especially when... Men don't have uh, emotions. We don't. What are you no. talking about? Um, and especially when it comes to, I think in my opinion, it, it tends to boil down to when you've just started dating or seeing someone and you kind of, you're not here or there and you're having a good way up of whether it's going to be something or not. That's when I tend to send the screenshots. Where is Tom's it? deep in this too much. I just send it for a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you say that, but I do remember you sending messages from when you very st- first started dating Jess. Oh, no, it can't be. Can't be true. No, well, it is true. See, I don't... I, I'm not a massive fan of the whole screenshot this, ask people for advice. Mm-hmm. I, I've... I mean, I've done it a couple of times recently, but I certainly never paragraphs because I don't think, like, I think a lot of the time with paragraphs, someone's like really sort of thought about what they want to say in yeah. it. And I wouldn't, I'd feel like I'm imposing on like a certain, their, le- a certain their level feelings of privacy. If I, go, yeah. if I go, hey guys, what do I respond but, to? This stupid but bitch that, but told by, me but, she but, loves but, me. But by the sounds of Vic's question, is that. But they're, they're screenshotting our message. Yeah, I was going to say, see, that's what the screenshot button was invented for, surely. The thing is, <laughs> the thing is, men are a hive mind. We're all connected. So, <laughs> so we all think on the same wavelength. Anyway. Do we? So, well, women, what this women conversation has to... demonstrated is men absolutely don't think on the same wavelength no, because no. two thirds of us screenshot messages and send them to each other. The other third doesn't. Yeah, yeah. but we're still a hive mind, right? So men, men think the same things we might not do the same things but we all think the same things you can do but, third but like course. women are a hive mind as well but i think the hive minds sort of operate differently than the men hive minds men there's there's like a, a joke that men um a men get older but they don't grow up women grow up but they don't get older so i don't know well, you make a good point about hive minds because, and it leads us nicely onto our next question from Are Holly. Are you just about to execute a very nice segue? I, I am. How good he's was been, that segue, he's been guys? I have mirror. been practicing. He has been practicing in the, the mirror. mirror. Always. The mirror. Lovely. Well, thanks very much, Vic, for that one. That was a beautiful one. Uh, yeah, so this next question comes from Holly. Shout out, Holly. Shout out, Holly. Shout out, Holly. Now, Holly's been listening to the podcast every week. Very big fan. And has thanks sent us quite much, a few Holly. questions. And I'm going to pull up one out for us right now. Girls going to the bathroom in groups when on a night oh. out. Thoughts. Oh. Now, I have a problem. What is this? Is I'm... this just the hive mind taking part? So I do believe that, you know, when you're in a nightclub or, or a bar, when it's, you know, a lot of people around, a lot of activity, that there is an aspect of safety in numbers to it. Um, because I just think it's that they want to gossip. It's the nightclub equivalent of screenshotting a message nah, and sending a, it to the group. There's a couple, there's a couple, couple of reasons. There's a couple of reasons. Tom's hit the nail on the head with one of them. It is girls feel safer when they go to the toilet. Yeah, in pairs. it's quite a vulnerable situation, yeah. and anyone could just walk in there. Two, they just want to take fucking pictures. Yeah, selfies, yeah. mirror yeah. selfies. Oh, the I time. mean, the only time you'll see guys go to the toilet together is if the doctor's told them not to do any heavy lifting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, that's that's why I have, that's why I have the fault lift for me. Yeah, it's well, <laughs> got, got a capacity of three just... tons, <laughs> and that's I'm still virgin on breaking. I that. wonder when this would come up. I have. I I have a problem with the whole going to toilets. Right? You have many problems, so, Joe. But so on. when girls go to the toilet in pairs, it's fine. When I do it, I get kicked out the greengrocers, and I don't think that's fair. <laughs> 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 See, Brilliant. that was funny. That was funny because we were talking about pairs as in yeah. two people, and, and he was talking about, about the greengrocers, the fruits. Fruit. Yeah. yeah, that was really good, tasteful and funny. Um, off the back of what you said about the, the going to the toilet, take group selfies. Um, Tell you what I've noticed off the the background of those photos, the look the luxury that women enjoy in the toilets. They've got sofas, little feng shui's set up, lovely atmosphere. Sorry, what 
What photos are you seeing, mate? They've got, because cl- every club tile I've ever seen honestly, is Honestly, there, there's, things like, there's things like um, not just your hand soap, but hand moisturiser. I wouldn't mind some moisturiser sometimes. You hand sanitizer all day. And they even have, like, you know, we have the aftershave people who come in and, you know. I'm not going to lie, they, mate. They I think, do, I'm I think sure they, you have perfume people, right? Perfume people, yeah. Perfume yeah, people. Getting a from behind thing. the camera. You know, like, the, and, and I'll tell you what I have noticed, which infuriates me, triple velvet. Okay. We have to. I, I we, think, I think we you have know, to deal. I think you know too much about we have to silence, deal mate. with single ply stuff. That if you crease it ever so slightly, you could you could risk cutting yourself. Your... The flip side to this, Thomas, is girls because of that mm-hmm. fit about three cubicles in the bathroom. Hence, why there is always a queue. That's a fair. Whereas shot. guys fit a couple of cubicles, twenty urinals, and a load of urinals. Mm-hmm. We never have to queue. No, okay. it's great. It well, we fit twenty urinals because only ten are usable, yes. which is a good joke. Girls won't understand, but there is a hidden rule to men's toilet. So, as a flip side, we'll give you a bit of an idea about men's perspective. Yes, you cannot use a urinal directly next to another Absolutely man. Absolutely Just not. an unwritten rule. someone else there. And, unless... COVID was, wasn't needed to tell oh, us that. Oh, no, no, no. Social no, no. distancing you know, came in a long time ago. You've got five urinals, only the left, right, and middle are used. Yeah. You can You'll tell that because... one dickhead that uses urinal too, and then it takes multiple out of use then you can only use well, two the, out the issue trip. with that then it's a knock-on effect it takes about three people to come in to reorder exactly. that because then suddenly there's one person there and you're obviously going in at staggered times yeah but now you've got an issue of well where do i go i can't so now you've got two and th- two and four being used rather than one two and five exactly or one three and five sorry and it's just this awfully awkward situation where you're now shoulder shoulder with another man who is just as drunk as you are and you you, you you're almost kind of sinking your wave have you ever noticed as well the person that squeezes himself into urinal three shoulder to shoulder with person on two and four always wants to talk always always cock in hand wants to have a conversation someone who's not what i want to do and and especially someone whose eyes want just trying to make friends around (laughs) (laughs) flipping it the see I I don't have to worry about your urinal etiquette because I ref, I just I always use sit down cu- I, I always use cubicles. Joe yeah, only I'll be honest, Joe I only wees sitting down. I've seen cubicles in uh, nightclubs. I one don't. Myself on one. Yeah, what is it with that the solid metal cast iron urinal with just two pieces of wood <laughs> like Not screwed that, to it? These are always piss on the toilet seat. How hard is it for this? It is hard. I'm not being funny, right? I don't have to worry about that because what I do is if I wee on the seat first, <laughs> then I'm only contracting my own germs. You're actually <laughs> weeing off everybody else's wee. The, <laughs> al- the, al- the alternative to this is that you just get some of the toilet paper that's provided if there's any left because it seems like most of the time there never is. Then you just wipe the seat and then, then you can sit on it. That's too or much this, is the al- this is the second alternative. You wipe it and then you get toilet paper and you put it on the seat. Now, see, that's my normal go-to. Yeah. I, that's my normal go-to. I, I will wipe the toilet. I will chuck toilet roll into the toilet to reduce any splash. Yeah. And, and then, you then I will lay out on the seat. a yeah. nice little... Um, Oops. It's normally a one, two, three, four. It's normally a, a four, five-piece jobby, you know, round the toilet seat. To one, to cushion and warm for my buttocks, but also to avoid any, uh, any you know, kind of bacterial or viral transfer. Yeah. I because, just use the bathroom before I go out. Well, yeah, but, you know, after you had a few beers, yeah, you break the seal and you need to go every 20 seal, minutes, you know, like it's tough. Right, now, dragging the conversation literally out of the gutter... That was I like literally. That. I like that. Um, back to you, Vic. Shout out, Vic. Uh, I've, I believe there is a part two to your query, and I'll play it for you now. And also, when a girl sends you a juicy paragraph, why do you only rep- respond to one point of the paragraph when there was quite clearly five points in there? <laughs> this is a very important one, actually. I need, that, I need that one answered because we need to know this. Like, do you not read them? Do you forget about them? Do you like look at them and then be like, oh, I just, I don't want to answer that. What is it? What do you do? I'll take this one for us, boys. Vic, why do you have to send us five points? <laughs> why? Why can't you just send us one paragraph point at a time? We'll answer them in order. We don't need five. That's a lot to deal with, you know. That's a lot of screenshots to send to the boys. That is a lot of screenshots, it actually. It if, is. A screen, need, if a message doesn't fit on one screenshot, size. it's far mm. too long. You need far too long, and you're not going to get the full response from us. Now, I, I think I, I may go against the grain here, but... I like a multiple pointed paragraph. I'm not. It's because you're a nerd. I am a, I'm a nerd, you know, as I've been. Um, but 
you know, like you've got, it's the difference between someone who sends a paragraph and someone who sends seven sentences in that. different An ordered paragraph is okay now, if there's like gaps between now, each part. I want to reply, if I get a paragraph, whatever it is, whether it's about the weekly shop or about something meaningful or deep or an argument or whatever it is, I will reply to every point within that paragraph. And I, I it depends on the person. Um, I will either do it with lots of different messages or I'll do it as a paragraph. I'll do it as a paragraph if it's someone that's just going to butt in mid-message that infuriates me. I've got Then I know I need with that person I've got to do a full paragraph, comprehensive, you know, spaces between each point to identify. I have responded to all. I quite enjoy it. It's, you know, it's, it's especially if it's someone you want to talk to, it's someone that you're actually having conversation enough that, that actually condones writing entire paragraphs then if it's obviously a conversation that you're invested in enjoying in so i would reply vic i can't speak for these two though so i'm going to put blinders up now because i i may get death stares from behind the camera you will informing me i'm entirely wrong mm -hmm. however no. i do feel like i endeavor to reply to multiple points on a paragraph but don't jess's face is quite disapproving mm -hmm. here yeah um, yeah, I feel like I, I try to reply to the points as much as possible in order as well. However, what I would say is, especially now that things like iMessage have an option where you can reply directly to a message, yeah. it makes more sense to send them as separate messages because you can reply to each one and keep a th but and how, see where but you're but up how to. But how infuriate, yes, you can see where you're up to, but then let's say you're, you're, you're mid-replying to a number of points and then you get a reply back to that first point. And suddenly, mid-reply to a number of points that you've previously received is now relating to a number of messages that were above those points. Mm. Like, it's it, honestly, it drives me crazy. So I, I always send, like, unless it's really, really serious, mm -hmm. I always send, like, multiple sentences. Yeah. Um, and I find that when I do that, when I am replying to a paragraph, because I do try to respond to every point, I do it in reverse <laughs> order. Oh no! But, but I never respond. So do you read so, the entire message first, and then reply from the most recent in your memory? Um, I sometimes it depends. I might be reading through it, and then as I'm reading, I think oh, I've got. A, okay, I can respond because quite because I, I I will reply to I will reply to messages. Reply. <laughs> reply, I'd love pie. Um, I will reply to messages as I'm going through them. I won't read the rest of the message until I'm ready to reply to that point, which then I find, you know, if someone's sending lots of consecutive messages, the circumstances change within those messages. So I'm replying to something that's completely unnecessary. So I, a couple of months ago, I got a very, very long paragraph. And what did you do? I, well, what I did was I read it mm -hmm. and left it for about seven or eight days. Ooh, because, no, no, no. And the reason- <laughs> Were you the playing reason, hard to get? No, no, no. The reason- to go? The reason I did it, it was. is because I didn't want to open the conversation up to what the topic was about because I didn't, I was trying, I was still trying to think of how I would respond to it. Was it whether you call... Trying to think was, of an acceptable reason as to why you go for sit down wheeze, weren't you? No, no, no. no, no. It was whether you call it a, a muffin or an oven bottom or a balm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a muffin. But, but I, it I, I left it for a little over a week because I, I couldn't think of how I wanted to respond to it. And I didn't want to open the conversation up when I hadn't thought of a response or hadn't thought about how I would approach responding to it. It's quite sensible, but we don't know what the topic was. Yeah. It might it might have been a virgency. I, I would it, like no, to what, it thank, wasn't a virgency. I'd like to thank you, Vic, because for with that question, what we have established is Joe is that guy. What do you mean? Hello, that guy. That guy. Just that guy. The yeah. one that we use a message Joe, for. No, that but guy. I, I I would normally God, don't be that guy. I'd I'd normally respond to stuff immediately or as soon as I possibly can. Mm. But this was like the first time that I thought I'd need to really think about the way I want to respond to this. It was your bank asking why you were uh, getting so much <laughs> it was money my, paid in from? Doge it was my time, drug dealer it? asking me yeah. where the missing. Before we go down a rabbit hole that we do not wish to go down, uh, I think. Well, especially as that was the last orders bell, we will wrap it up there. Absolutely. Um, thank you. 
ever so much once again for listening. Certainly. Thank you, Holly. Thank you, Vicky. Those were wonderful questions. And we are very much looking forward to the rest that we're going to cover over the next couple of episodes. And we may even have a cheeky one or two new segment coming your way. If you are one of our frequent listeners. What then... teaser? You're like a line of duty know. episode. There, Honestly. Tom. Speaking of which, if you have seen the last episode of Line of Duty, no spoilers, don't worry. Thank you. Um, I agree, they all I, die. I agree with you. Uh, I've I've not watched it. Well, we don't need to. They all die. Mm. <laughs> Every single one of them dies. Cheers, boys. Cheers. Thanks Cheers. for listening. See you next week.